preaching on it, but I want to tell you something. This garage party, you could turn a sermon out of this. You can make a sermon out of this. You can make a sermon out of this. Plug in, girls. Come on, get your spark back, girls. I'm telling you, mm, I should get like three hours. Because, I mean, come on, come on. So I'm like, I just got to bring some spark plugs up because I actually hope that tonight is a spark. Jumper cables, that's what I meant. I know. <laughs> a jumper cables. What are spark plugs? What do they look like? <laughs> jumper cables, because I hope that I can like bring that power jump into your life to restart something that maybe has been getting a little dull and dead. And so we're going to do something fun. This is my daughter, Jada. She's not sure where to put the chair because I texted Jada at lunch today at school and said, Jada, will you do a drama with your mama? She says, yes. She comes home and goes, mom, I've never done a drama before. I said, and you are a preacher's kid. And you said, yes. Right, Jada? I love it. Okay. So we've practiced like twice, but she's going to do awesome. So um, get ready for this little drama because the car theme. If you ever grew up in our youth group, you've probably done this drama before. But oh, three. Whew, it's a good day for a drive. Oh, except for that red light. Hmm, man. It's gonna turn. Hmm, someone's honking. Can't be for me because I'm doing what's right. Hmm. Someone is honking. Wonder, can't, can't be for me. I, I cannot be for me. I'm not doing anything wrong. It's a red light. Honk, honk, honk. Teenage driver. Why in the world? They shouldn't even be. She's so smiley. <laughs> Does she know I'm just, just here at a stoplight? Honk, 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 honk. Oh, lady. I don't know if you understand, but I can't go anywhere. And if you honk one more time, honk, 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 honk. that's it. Window down. Did you flunk kindergarten? The light is red. Red means stop. Green means go. I can't go anywhere and you are honking at me. What is wrong with you, lady? Why are you honking? I'm sorry, ma'am. It's just your bumper sticker says honk if you love Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Good job, Jada. You can take him. Thank you, Jada. Anybody want to say guilty as charged? <laughs> you know what? I just felt like I wanted to have some fun with you. <laughs> I told Jada we were practicing that in the car. And she goes, oh, is your sermon on Christian character? I'm like, no. <laughs> so the drama was supposed to relate. No, it didn't. But <clears throat> I felt like it would be fun honestly, to get up here and, and do that with Jada and just kind of keep it real with you guys, because as Peggy and everyone said, Carla's song, the jokes, everything's been so good, the drama, just we're all a work in progress, and there's Christians that mess up, and we get road rage, we do stupid things, and we need, we need refreshed, we need repaired, and we're just human. I want to introduce my family really briefly. My husband's Pastor Danny in the back. Hey, Danny, wave at everybody. Yes. <clears throat> my dad is here. Is my dad in the house? Where's dad? He's gone. There's my dad. Hi, dad. There's my dad. My mom is here. There's my mom. She'll take your picture. She's so funny. So there's my mom, Sue. My daughter, Jada, and then the rest of my family's in this picture that are not here. But um, our oldest daughter, Danica, in the middle there got married this summer. And um, I'm not going to cry because she's in God's perfect will. She just lives a really long ways away. Tessa, over here on the, your right, um, just finished her first year of Bible school. And I'm going to go down there next week and see her as she finishes strong, has another year. And actually, Cindy is over here. And her daughter, Nicole, went to school with her. They both just finished. So this is their week to finish strong. And then our only son, Micah. And um, I just thank God for my family. A little back history there is we came to New Life Church before I was ever pregnant with Danica. And um, this church healed my heart. This church brought life. And um, we are thankful for this church. This church is not a building. This church is people. 
And I love this church because I love the people. And I'm thankful to be here and honored to be here. And of the course of that, we have been youth pastors for 21 years. And you know what? It's called Peter Pan Syndrome. We're fine. We're fine. We like it. We feel young and hip. Right, Danny? (laughs) Wiki, wiki. We're cool. I got a new shirt. I'm so cool in my new shirt. Okay. So, um... (laughs) I also, I believe that um, God wants to do some cool stuff in us, all of us. And when I think about being a part of a church or even in ministry for 21 years, you'd think you would have arrived. (laughs) And I just need you to know we're still driving and we have not arrived. And the reality is we're works in progress, your works in progress, but we're not giving up. We're on a journey. We're on a road. We want to carry out the call of God on our lives, on this road, and the road isn't always easy. In fact, I was thinking about our garage party theme, and the idea that it's a party, it's a garage party, it needs to be fun, but I also thought we need to walk away from here tonight as if we were actually in the garage, and we leave with a tune-up. We leave with our tires balanced, girls little imbalance in our lives. We leave with new oil. Oil, real oil. The oil that comes from the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit. And I want us to allow the Holy Spirit to take everything about tonight and use it for His glory. So if you'll just close your eyes and pray with me. God, I thank you for the opportunity to be here. I thank you for your word and your spirit. I thank you that you have a message you want to bring forth. And I ask for your grace and anointing upon what I'm about to say on my notes. Use them or do something else. Whatever you want, God, your will be done. But I pray we would leave this place changed from glory to glory. That we would get a tune-up, a Holy Ghost tune-up. That we would get the, the, the greasy parts out. We'd get all cleaned up, ready to be more effective in your kingdom. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit here right now to move through our midst and to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. He might have already spoke something to you. And so just let it keep building and take to heart what you're learning. So uh, if you've never heard me preach, I can't help it. People go, why do you sing every time? I can't help it. I want to be you, Carla. Where are you at, Carla? When she said, Sarah, you want to come? I'm like, me. Take me. She did one time 20 years ago. (laughs) One time. I still reminisce that. (laughs) I sang with Carla. It was amazing back in the day. She knows that we still talk about it, but... (laughs) I like bringing up the good days, you know. But he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars. Those are huge. (laughs) Jupiter and Mars. But how loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. We're just a work in progress to the point where On Wednesday, I almost called and said, pick someone else, Peggy. And I don't want a pity party. That's not why I'm sharing this. It's real. It's real. It was like, honestly, on Wednesday, I was just like, there's got to be someone else that should do this. Because all I could see were my unfinished parts. In the song, it says, unfinished parts. That's all I could see that day. But I didn't even wake up that way. Let me back up and tell you how fast the enemy works. Tell you how he messes and he knows your buttons. He knows what to do to pop your tire and get you derailed. He knows mine. So Wednesday morning, I make this awesome post. Any Facebook followers? Okay. Show him my look at I felt every ounce of that. I like my bitmoji, just so you know. I had a bitmoji about... A year ago, there was a little thinner. <laughs> and I actually had this thought. I don't want anybody to look at my bitmoji and go, mm, she thinks she's thinner than she is. So I added a little weight, and then I started going to curves, and I wanted to represent well. You know, I got me some more curves. So anyways, but back to this. 
this is how I felt. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Rise and shine and give God. That, that's how I wake my kids up. Ask God what he has for you today. This was me. This was my true heart Wednesday morning when I woke up. I promise you I wasn't lying. This is what I felt. I said, ask God, may I have my best day. Your will be done. Where do you want me today, God? Have a great day, everyone. Jesus loves you. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. It doesn't get any better than that. That's how I felt in the morning. And by about one, all I could see and feel were my inadequacies. I don't know what exactly happened. I don't know what it was around me or spiritually or emotionally, but Satan knows my buttons and he knows how he can mess with me. So he started messing with my thoughts and thoughts of frustration or disappointment, fear of the future, inadequacies, insecurities began to creep in. And it wasn't because I don't have a good life. It wasn't because Danny was doing something wrong or, or there, I don't have food or clothes. I mean, I got lots of chocolate. We are doing fine in the food area at my house. But something, the enemy... And that day, Danny comes home, and, and someone's going to relate to this. And some of you are going to go, well, you should just be thankful. Rhonda, always tell me, just be thankful for your husband. Treat him like a king. I'm trying, Rhonda. I'm trying. So Danny comes home, and he doesn't know what kind of thoughts are trying to, they're creeping in. And he starts to tidy up. Some of you would go, that's the coolest man in the world. You know what that said to me? He thinks I don't keep the house clean enough. That is not what my servant-hearted husband was saying, but that's what I heard. And then, you know, it's lunchtime, I better cook him lunch, and I did not have hardly any food. And it's literally as if I felt and thought, life fail. You guys, because there was some dirt on the floor and not enough food in the fridge, that's not a good reason to feel like a failure. It's a lie of the enemy to get us to find our identity in what we do instead of who we are. Danny would have liked me to wear this shirt that day that says, loved, you're loved. I love you. Let me clean up some stuff around here. But I could only hear it the other way. So I'm only telling you this because he's still working on me. We're just hot messes half the time, but I need to always remember to get in his word. Even that day I had been in the word, I'd spent time knowing who he was. And the enemy not only crept in, he was starting to set up camp. And that's when you need to stay, take charge. It's when I need to take charge. Thoughts will come. Don't let him make camp in your head. Cast those thoughts down that contradict the truth and get your mind fixed on who you are in Christ. So with this in mind, I felt like God wanted me to just open with that because everyone has their area that needs some oil, their area where you struggle. Mine is self-doubt, insecurity, fear of failure, and needing a lot, a lot of compliments. I hate it. It's the stupidest love language in the world. I'm like, just tell me all the awesome things. And yet I don't want empty compliments. So you could do it wrong. That's a problem too. Anybody else affirmation people by nature? Please admit that affirmation is your love language. I'm the only one. Thank you, Chloe. You're awesome. Here I see she feels it, baby. Ah! Okay. I don't want empty affirmations, but it's this, the enemy knows you. So where do you need oil? This is my story where I needed some oil. Where do you need oil? It might be in the marriage example they talked about here. Maybe you do have road rage. God wants you to get free and you to come to the garage and you to leave today, tonight, ready to be effective for his kingdom and get rid of this, these, oil, these things that need some oil in your life. So maybe it's all there just so you feel normal. And you know what? I had Danny make a sign. I wish I had this bumper sticker on my car. Don't judge me yet. There's an unfinished part. That's that song. I'll be perfect just according to his plan. Fashioned by the master's loving hands. I'm just not there yet. Are you? Are you judging everybody because they're not there yet? Are you judging, being too hard on yourself because you're not there yet? What if you just let everybody wear a bumper sticker that says... There's unfinished parts. He's still working on me. Oh, okay. So you were snippy with me. Cool. He's still working on you too. I'm going to let it go. Do you get what I'm saying? 
we start giving each other a little grace. Oh, you're not perfect yet. Cool. Then I can be a little flawed and you can be a little flawed and we'll begin to function higher in the call of God on our lives. I have some good news for you ladies. Philippians chapter 4 or Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. This is good news for me and good news for you being confident of this that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. I don't have to carry the work. He who began the good work, he will carry it on to completion, but I got to remain in him and him remain in me. But he does the work in my life. When I get to rest in that, I go, I'm going to the garage. I'm going to hang out in the garage and let the master, the mechanic, the maker do the good work in me. He is so faithful. So just similar with the being made, being made to completion, I also wanted to share a little bit about clay pots. Clay pots are found in garages, but my whole sermon's not about pots, don't worry. But listen, just as I was feeling all this, um, well, it's lies, but I still thought it. Lies of the enemy, the unworthy, the unuseful, things like that. Who does like a Bible in a year reading plan? Who does the Nikki Gumbel one? Anyone do that with me? I love that one. It's so great. Okay, so you already heard this story, so work with me. So just when I'm feeling this, the daily, the daily reading for that talks of a villager who had two pots on a stick, and he carried his two pots to the water well, and he filled up both pots, and he took the water home to his family. And every day he got home, and every day one of the pots was half empty because it was cracked. So day after day, he keeps going. And finally, the cracked pot says, I'm useless. I'm ineffective. I'm inadequate. Your need for me is to get water to your family, and I can't even do it. Any women feel like you can't? Sometimes you've begun to believe your cracks are just so cracky (laughs) that you can't get past your cracks, and then no one will like you because you're such a crackpot. We are not crackpots. We've been redeemed. Okay, no, not that I ever was. But anyone that was, God loves you and forgives you. Okay, but (laughs) awkward. (laughs) Sorry. Okay, so this cracked pot is feeling as if he's wasting the owner's time, that he's not as valuable. And the master says, as you're obviously probably figuring out, he says, did you see? That beautiful row of flowers on the right side of the road every time we walk home. He goes, I planted those seeds and you watered them every day. And I pick those flowers for my table and you bring me pleasure. He said to the pot, your purpose brings me great joy. And when I wrote that today, I was, that wasn't from Nikki Gumbel. I just reworded it. I felt the Holy Spirit say, write it again. And then look right at you. Your purpose brings him joy. And your purpose is not my purpose. We each have our own. Your purpose brings him joy. So fulfill your purpose. And don't resign that you're useless because you have cracks in your story. Because we're just all vessels wanting to be used. And he shines through our cracks. And he wants to use us. He wants you to say, thank you, God, for making me the way I am. And you can use me the way you want to. Isaiah 50, or 45 verse 9 says, Woe to him who quarrels with his maker. One clay pot among many. Does the clay ask the potter, what are you making? So how many of you wish you could like look at God and say, what were you thinking? (laughs) Susie, we laugh together in church. Okay, what were you thinking? We don't get to look at the maker and question his purpose for us, why he made us this way. I honestly want to say, why do I laugh like this? (laughs) I seriously, if my mom gets your baby, she will try to teach them to laugh like her. (laughs) <laughs> That's what we both do. She wanted me to laugh like this. It's not easy laughing like this. It's one of those things, unfortunate, right, Jada? <laughs> List of unfortunates. Now, Mom, thank you for the laugh. It's great. Sometimes, honestly, sometimes I go, why do I think like I think? 
<laughs> Becky's my friend over here. Hi, Becky. We walk together, so she hears me more than the rest of you probably. She goes, you are a champion overthinker. I'm like, hmm. Is that a compliment? <laughs> How do I take that right now, Becky? She's like, oh, I mean it in a good way. I'm like, ah, I don't know that that's good. Actually, it really was an excellent statement. And then she's like, but I love how you think. And I like that God uses how you think. I can't go, God, why do I think the way I do? Now, sometimes you got to cast your stupid thoughts down. But you can't look at the maker and say, why? Because he has a plan and he has a purpose. And he intended you to be you. And he wants to use you the way you are. Romans chapter 9, verse 20 through 21 says, But who are you, O oh man, to talk back to God? Ooh. You going to talk back to God? Think that he made a mistake? Think that he doesn't like you? Ooh, he's like, I love you. I formed you. And it says, why did you make me like this? Does the potter have the right to make from the same lump of clay one vessel for special occasions and the others for common use? One time, this isn't in my notes, but one time Danny did a whole sermon on Philip, right? Oh, I don't even remember. Philip, he was so common, so ordinary. He's one of the 12 disciples. If I said, what'd Philip do? You guys would go, I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows about Philip. He was chosen. He was one of the 12. He was anointed. Philip. <laughs> Great, Philip. You know, like it might have been for common use, but it's not a fail if that's what he was made for. Seriously. Woo! We've got to quit comparing ourselves. We've got to know who we are in Christ. So, Garage setting, not a garden. We're going to talk quickly. Construct, repair, and maintenance. Now, the first one is construct. And I was thinking about this. I like looking at the definitions. I'm a little old-fashioned like this. So the word construct has many, but I liked form. Sorry, I might have made that too loud. Form, fashion, and create. Form, fashion, and create. And I was also thinking about cars. and I've, I've really come alive with cars thanks to this theme. I'll tell you the one I want you to buy me later, but I'll get there. It's in my notes. But form, fashion, and create. That's endearing. Form, fashion, create. He formed you in your mother's womb. You were intricately made. He thinks of you, and he knows every part of you. He knows the hairs on your head. He loves you. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's his intention, was that he make you the way you are. He knows you full well. He knows his works full well. And he says they're wonderful. I don't know, ladies. I'm not talking about self-confidence. But what if you looked in the mirror someday and go, you're wonderful. Seems weird. But to God, you're wonderful. Wonder. How does your brain work? How do our stomachs work? How do our arms and legs and mouths and... I know how my mouth works, but how does it work? <laughs> We're wonderful. I'm not talking about your size or your outfit or your lipstick. I'm talking about the real you. Wonderful. You are wonderfully made. So as I was thinking about all these cars, got to go with the car theme a little bit. I was like, I wonder how many different types of cars there are. She already told us you're brown. Cool, Sarah. Any more brown people in the house? Come on. Yeah. Brown people love being brown. Man, the rest of us are trying to get brown. For real. Seriously. It's true. I'm like, oh, man. Actually, I took pictures for a gal who owns a self-tanning thing, and she offered a free one. I'm like, oh, what do I wear? <laughs> you just come and you spray me? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't said yes yet. But anyways, so there's so many types. There's so many models. You car people know this. I didn't even know what jumper cables were. But I have had fun <laughs> looking up cars. So this is going to be really quick. Think of all the types and then think about you. Maybe it'll be like, oh, I'm a coupe. I didn't even know what a coupe was. I had to look. I mean, what is a coupe? Okay, here we go. Danny's got them in pictures. There's convertibles. I'm a convertible, I'm pretty sure. Okay, convertible, a coupe, a crossover. You ready, Danny? A diesel, a hatchback, a hybrid, a luxury. Some of you are luxury girls, man. You can be that. Okay, luxury minivan. <laughs> Any minivans in the house? <laughs> so... 
Actually, those are probably the most useful vehicle on the face of the earth. Stow and go, doors that just open. I mean, it's pretty amazing. I'm driving the church minivan right now. <laughs> kind of fond of it. Okay, so minivans are a real thing. Okay, sedan, SUVs trucks and wagons. That was in this list of types. There's types of people. God likes your type. God likes your type. And then in the types, there's other types and styles. And like in the truck world, there's, wait, Carla, wait for it. Box trucks, flat, <laughs> she's already laughing. I'll tell you about our inside joke. Okay. There's box trucks and flatbed trucks and dump trucks and mini trucks and boom trucks. We have a boom truck over here, and we spent an entire staff meeting trying to figure out how we could hide the boom truck for Easter. <laughs> Did it end up at your house, Amanda? Like, we tried and tried and tried. I'm like, what's so ugly about the boom truck? They're like, it just takes up a lot of space. Okay, who knew? Anyways, there's types of trucks. And then I'm like, there's still, oh, Danny got a boom truck picture. Good job, babe. Okay, and then there's muscle cars. Mmm. That's like yours. Is that like yours? Okay, Glenn Becky has one of those. I've ridden one like that. Okay, there's muscle cars. There's classics. Maybe you're classic. You be classic. You don't have to change. You be classic. Oh, who feels like that? Deep inside. Oh, you're classic. Okay, there's classic. Where am I at in my notes? Okay, there's station wagon. Wait for it. Mm. Who went on vacation in one of those? And you slept in the back and you played cards in the back and like that thing was amazing. They should have never let that die. That's the perfect car. Station wagons. There's 15 passengers. Some of you have that many kids. 15 <laughs> passengers. Sports cars, Yugos. Come on, there's a sports car, there's a Yugo. Okay, go back to the sports car. See, we all kind of want to think we're, that's Rachel. I mean, does anyone see Rachel? Whoa, yellow and everything. She's already running on that knee surgery she had. Rachel, sports car. Then there's Yugos. Anyone want to just admit, you're a Yugo. Okay. <laughs> then there's, Mom, I think this is the type of car you had. What kind of car did you have in, when you were in college? This? What was the name of your car? She doesn't remember. Buick convertible. My mom, fresh out of high school, drove a Buick white convertible. Let's give her a hand. Like, who knew? She was so cool, right? Oh my goodness, Grandma Sue. What? I wish you would have collected those. And me and Danny, we started collecting prepaid calling cards. We should have collected old cars. That would have helped us a little more. Okay, moving on. Then there are, <laughs> um, there's old sports cars that might be in here. I don't know. Isn't that cool? You guys, that is just cool. Uh, some of our older serving men, you're just really cool old sports cars. We love you. <laughs> cars, oh, there's the F Ford 150. Any cowgirls in the house that you're like, if that was a Ford or a Chevy, you'd want the big old pickup truck. Anybody? Yeah, some of you girls, you're like, I am the pickup. That's a truck, man. So pretend it's a Chevy if you're a Chevy girl. That's fine. All right. And then there's this. There's cars that seem the same. Oh, wait. Got it. Not that one yet, Danny. That's a surprise. Oh, is there the one with all the cars? If not, I'll forgive you. Because that drama told me to forgive you. Okay. So then there's all the cars. This picture actually stood out to me. Because see, even when you're driving around, we see the really cool antique ones. We see the fast ones. We see the expensive. We even see the really cheap one like the Yugo. We tend to notice. Maybe you just feel like one, just one in thousands. You still have a purpose. You're still taking kids to school. You still get your family to church. You still can take groceries to someone. You still have a purpose. Even if you just blend in, not everyone has to be the next one. Today at the gym, Curves, I told you that I like going to Curves. That car, I, almost, I mean, I think it was almost exactly like that car. I went home and looked it up, was sitting outside. And I, you guys, I'm like, oh! Maybe it's the fact that I'm driving the church minivan right now. But I like oogled over this car and I just decided I'd show it to you <laughs> in case anyone ever just feels the need. I would totally drive that car, okay? So, but here's the deal. God has made you all these beautiful cars, 
he didn't make the cars. That is not biblical. But he made, <laughs> just to clarify, heresy. Okay, so he made you... And we're all like emotionally attached to some of these car pictures. Like you could feel it. You're like, you want to be one of those, or you aspired one. But really, you are so much more priceless and precious. In fact, if I owned that car and someone dented it, you all would be sad for me. But you'll dent yourself all the time. You'll put scratches on yourself. You'll demean yourself. You are so much more precious and so much more valued to God than that car. And I want us to start seeing how precious God made you and get on the road again. So with this in mind, God constructed you. You're on purpose. Start liking who he made you to be and get busy doing the things. Some cars, trucks are made for hauling things. Some are made for hauling people. Some are made for Sunday drives and some are made for Uber Eats. You're going to think that's funny. <laughs> who gets Uber Eats in Billings? Admit it. Oh, a couple of you. Okay, so I know a family whose mom, after she works all day and tends to her children, goes and drives and Uber Eats. She's working hard for her family. I commend her. It's beautiful. And yet, you might feel like, it's just silly. It's not important. She's helping provide for her family. I think we need to realize when you're cleaning a floor or you're setting up tables and chairs, or you're tucking your kids in at night, or you're visiting your elderly parents, or you're planting seed into the church and helping missionaries, that you're being a vehicle that God can use. You're being a vessel, a vehicle to do something good for its glory. See, you may wish, you may wonder why you're not that fast and flashy sports car. I shouldn't have used your name, Rachel, because no one's really comparing, but... Really, truly, picture any sports car out there. You might go, I wish I was that flash, fast and sporty sports car. Flashy, what do I have written here? Fast and flashy sports car, sister. But God wants you to bring glory to your neighborhood. So you grow right into your neighborhood just like you are. And you bring his glory. You be the vehicle in your neighborhood. He want, you might wish you were something else. You were old and, and like got all that classy style. And you're like, you know what? I'm just who I am. But God wants you to love the unlovely. To bring hope to the hopeless. Don't question his creation. Your inner workings are more intricate than any one of these vehicles. And he has a plan. And you're put in the loving hands of the Father. So you may say... If only I looked like her, here's the comparison, the, the, um, the, the struggle in our world today is so much comparison of yourself to others that you are the one deciding you're not qualified. No one else is going, you're not qualified, you're not, you're going, I'm not qualified because I can see her. And some of that's the social media problem because we can see everything. But I want to tell you something. Some of you will say as a, as a vehicle, I'm using you, if I looked like her, sounded like her, understood things like her, knew the Bible like her, had friends like her, and cooked like her, had a man like hers, then I would be ready to be used. Then I would be ready to come out of the garage. But I want to say to you girls, it is time to take your car covers off. It's time to open your garage doors. It's time to dust off your rims, put your dice back on your mirror, and get out of the garage and go be used for the purpose he made you. And go and make disciples. Get on the road. Get out of your comfort zones. Climb some spiritual mountain drives and do something for his kingdom because he wants you to go and drive and be who you're called to be. You know what? While you go, roll down your windows. Being a Christian is fun, you guys. If it's not fun to you, then you're not fun. <laughs> I think it's true because being a Christian is fun. How do I know that? Because you're free. You're forgiven. You get to go to heaven one day. That's fun. That's enough to roll your window down and do that. <laughs> like, let it happen. You know what I'm talking about. It might mess up your hair. Oh, well. If you have allergies, you can leave your window up. <laughs> it's really a thing. <laughs> You can, okay, but roll your window down in life and remember that life is good even when there's potholes. 
Life is good when you're on a bumpy road. Life is good because God is taking care of you on whatever road you're on. And you don't get to go, well, she's on this highway and I'm over here in a dirt road. You know what? You be thankful that you're on the road, whatever road it is. And you trust God that he's got a purpose for you on the road that you're on. And get excited and stop the fear, the doubt, the comparison, the shame, the regret, and get you out of the garage and go. And that's allowing him to construct you the way he made you, wanted you. Repair, number two. All right, repair. So if you didn't see it on Facebook yet, I think Carla would love for you to go and watch it again. <laughs> Remember that video? You're like, it's on there. Is that the one? You're like, ah. And it goes, I got a couple dents in my fender. Who was in that video? All of you. I loved it. They're like, they're playing it over and over. It's so cute. There's an old song and all these gals were in it. I got a couple dents in my fender. I'm not going to sing the rest. We all have some dents in our fender. And you know what? We need repair. So when you think about the dents, some are because you <laughs> or me backed into some. It's your fault. <laughs> some of your dents are your fault. And some, I need you to hear this. Because when Peggy said at the beginning, there's some hearts that might be broken. There might be some mending that needs to happen. Some of the dents in your fender, fender are not your fault. They were undeserved. They were unwanted. You may have been scratched up, beat up, bruised, dented, misused. And it's not your fault. And God wants to repair you. He wants you to know that he'll use you and he'll buff out all that and he'll bring some healing to the dents in your fender and begin to let you walk in God confidence again. Right now, spiritually speaking, maybe some of you, your motor has, you run to the ground spiritually. Maybe that you feel like, I like who I am. I'm, I'm a little sedan, <laughs> you know, I'm a sedan. I don't hate who I am, but you've been broken down for so long that you're sitting in your garage unable to do anything. You're broken down because you have not maintained and you are needing some serious repair. But unless you admit you need repair, then you're not taking yourself to the mechanic. So we got to be willing to admit we need repair. Maybe you're broken down. You're broken hearted. Maybe you have a broken marriage. Maybe you, ha you have broken trust or a broken spirit. It is time for your repair. Gals, if you drove or had to take a tow truck of your life and pull yourself into the maintenance garage and you finally got there and Jesus, God is the mechanic and you get there, he is not going to look at you and say, you've made a hot mess of yourself. I'm ashamed of you. Get out of my garage. He will not. <laughs> He doesn't do that. He fearfully and wonderfully made you. If an original car maker saw one of his cars all beat up and he got it back in his garage one day, he would be elated to repair it. He wouldn't shame it for where it went through in life. He'd want to repair it. And this is what Jesus actually, the mechanic says to you, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. He says, come to me, all who labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's what he says. Second Corinthians 12, verse 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. You drive your weakness right into the garage and say, I'm weak, repair me. And he says, My power will be made great in your weakness. Let me fix you up, sweetheart. Let me fix you up. Moving on, he says in Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. There's a car, Danny, that car that's just destroyed. We put that on the screen. Some of you feel like that. It's crushed spirit, crushed body, crushed mind, crushed dreams, crushed hopes. And I want to say to you, when the maker sees that, he goes, potential, <laughs> hope, I can fix you. It's okay. I'm going to fix you. 
I can help you. And he takes his loving hands and he begins to mend and to heal and restore. Show him what this car looks like repaired. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? That car, well, that one's a convertible of it, but I did look up the same kind of car. Sorry, not the exact car. But that kind of car repaired. Look at the restore that God can do in your heart. But the word repair, it means restore, to make good as new. So I have a quick, tiny little story. And when Danny and I were first, well, we weren't first married. It was probably 10 years ago. We've been married over 20 years. So um, we had a little disagreement. We're going to just call it that. We don't really shout and scream, but I'm, I'm right, you know, so I have to make sure he knows. <laughs> so I was trying, probably the truth is, I was probably getting him, trying to get him to understand how he could make me feel less insecure and compliment me better or some. That's the shallowness of most of our arguments, just keeping it real. So we're standing across the table, and he looks at me, and he goes, after he tried to do everything he could to make this right, he goes, I can't fix you. Oh, wrong sentence. I had these candles on my table. I grabbed it, and I just threw it at him. And I said, you're going to try to fix me? I'm not the problem. You are. <clears throat> so, and then we started laughing because I threw a candle at him. And we're okay, and we really are okay. But truth be told, the word fix is uncomfortable. But see, God wants to fix. He wants to mend. He wants to repair. And you got to be willing to let him fix. Lisa Turker said, or not Turkers, Bevere said one time, I prayed, God, would you just renovate my life? Renovate. Like Joe and the Gaines people. Chip and Johanna. They renovate, right? Oh. She's like, renovate my life. Pretty soon she's like, God, I didn't say excavate. So God really does want to excavate and renovate and fix. But you got to let him tear down some walls. Actually, Jeremy, is a, he restores, he repairs, he renovates. you got to take down some old walls. Walls. That church doesn't care about me. I'm going to quit tithing because I don't think that the church does well with money. This is in my notes. I'm just saying it. Walls. Walls of. I'm done trying to be friends because no one reciprocates. Walls. I'm going to quit having sex with my husband because you know what? He doesn't deserve it. Walls. My mom laughed at that one. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, walls. The walls have to come down for a true renovate. And once they're down, the end result so much better. I'm almost done. It's just so much better. But girls, we want to skip the process sometime. And actually, I think it was Rhonda that said in the skit, she goes, uh, repair takes time. And it was totally in my notes. Repair takes time, and you can't skip the hard little details. Because you know what? Who doesn't want, like, a new paint job? <laughs> right? If we could just, well, spray tan. No. But if we, <laughs> that's a paint job. But if we could just have, like, all the outside fixed. Actually, Danny wanted me to ask you, ladies, if you all had your blinker fluid checked lately. And I go, we're smarter than that. We know there's no such thing as blinker fluid. And then I started thinking about it. Yeah, there is. It's called mascara. Oh. <laughs> Maria, shh, shh. there's my joke for the night. Okay, so, but we could try to get a new paint job. But if we don't fix the gears, we're still ugly. We're still creaky. We're still unbalanced. Our brakes might be off. A new paint job won't help us, like, be able to go where we need to go if the inside's messed up. Let God repair by going to him and let him do the inner working that needs to happen to heal your heart, to bring the truth of what he wants to bring to you and let him bring the yuck and turn it in to beautiful. And I believe you will go, oh, I finally feel it. I feel ready, ready for God's use. So last one, Maintenance. This one's really special to me, and I will, I'll wrap up. Maintenance. You want to know why it's special to me? Because I'm a pastor. I can't help it. I have a pastor's call. I have a pastor's heart. And I love deeply. In fact, when sheep that I love aren't functioning, 
at the peak they could be. My heart is sad at home for you or your teens or your kids. Why? Because I know the pleasure of maintenance. I know how great it is when you keep your oil changed. I know how awesome it is when you keep everything functioning at its best. Not because I'm perfectly functioning at my best, but I'm sure doing what I know to do to live with maintenance spiritually in my life. And I want that for everyone I know. So to wrap this up, the process of maintenance, the, it means, or maintenance means process of maintaining or preserving or carrying on. The Bible actually warns that in the last days, many will fall away. You're like, Lori, this is supposed to be fun. It's not fun to me if someone falls away. That's not fun. Fun is to say to you, many will fall away. Don't be her. Stay on track. Keep on the road. Stay maintenance in your walk with God. Keep spiritually filled up. Because the antonym, which is the opposite for all of you that didn't pay attention in your English class, is the opposite is breakdown. How many women are breaking down? And God wants us to live life to the full. He wants us to have life and life more abundantly. And that comes from maintenance, spiritual maintenance. He wants us to keep up. So in John chapter 15, verse 4 through 6, it says, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. We'll have a strong engine. Car terms. Will be effectively driving the course, the purpose God has for you. For apart from me, Jesus, you and me can do nothing. But if, 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 if it's your choice, if you remain in him, he is like, okay, if you, oh, sorry, sorry, we're mad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If you, if anyone does not remain, that's what I need to say. In me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such a branch, branches are gathered up and thrown in the fire and burned. It matters so much to me that you remain. Remain. Abide in the vine, abide in the vine, abide in the vine. It's your power source. Jesus is the vine. You have to stay remaining in him. But as I was putting my notes together, I need everyone to be willing to just be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit about what I'm about to share. Because as writing this, this isn't what I would typically write for a women's event. But I'm like, some of them... Some, some people in here maybe aren't grafted in. And here's what I'm going to say. And I'm not making this a joke. I'm being serious. Going to church makes you a Christian as much as sleeping in the garage makes you a car. I'm being serious. You maybe have gone to church your whole life. You may even say, I believe I, I like crosses. Crosses are in my home. I post other things about God and Jesus. You may go, I, I'm not an unbeliever, but you maybe have not taken your belief to confession. And it's the confession of your faith that causes you to go from believer to born again. And I would hate to have a garage party where we get to hang out with the man that is the maintenance man, the creator, the one who made us, and leave anybody without the engine. We need that starting point. You can't remain if you don't have. And so as I was thinking about this today, I'm like, there's no guilt. Many people will go, I, I, I've actually met people that go, I totally love God. No one told me how. And so I'm going to tell you how right now it's super, it's super short. And when I say simple, it's because God made it simple. But the prayer is a decision. And it's a beautiful prayer to give your life to the Lord. So here's the people I want to talk to really briefly. If you believe in Jesus, you believe in God, but you've never said, God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord like that engine and my Savior Forgive me of my sins. I receive you in my life. Then you're a believer, but you're not born again. So we want to lead you to that. If you're here today and you are like, you know what? 
I've never heard this, but what you're saying now, I'm ready just because you said it. Even if you haven't been in church or you didn't know this before, then tonight you could say, I have no reason not to be a Christian. I want to pray that too. And if you're here tonight and you've already prayed that prayer for the sake of them feeling comfortable in the garage, if you are willing to pray with anyone and we will pray a prayer of asking Jesus into our heart in a moment after I read Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, this is what you would be doing, ladies, any of you that haven't done this before. Not because you didn't, you were rebellious, maybe you just didn't know. But it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart. Many believe they just don't declare that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. You receive your engine. You receive the Holy Spirit in that very moment. It's the power. You receive the Holy Spirit the minute you ask Jesus in your heart. And some people are cars without the power, and we can receive it right now. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and you are saved. So if everyone in this place is willing to close their eyes with me, do not feel obligated, feel invited. If you're here and you're like, I, I'm ready, Lori, I want to be sure. I'm ready, I want to pray. I'm not even going to make you raise your hand. Everyone that's willing to pray out loud with me, repeat and pray this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I ask you, God, to forgive me of my sins. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. From this day forward, I will do my best to honor you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now this is a real garage party. Now it's a party. All of the angels in heaven are having a party. <clears throat> because I don't think that I wrote that because I wanted to write it. I believe God knew who was going to be here. And I believe with all my heart, at least one person asked she's in their heart. Why would he have me do it? I have to believe that that's what our maintenance man wanted. So wrapping up. This is going to get really fun as I close. It's so hot in here. Is everybody else really hot? I'm sorry. Don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> I'm almost dead. It's a party. You just received the Holy Spirit. If you were here and you hadn't asked Jesus in your heart before, you just received the Holy Spirit because that's what happens when you get born again. The Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, Sonny. Lives in you. Lives in you. Lives in me. The same Spirit. Do you understand the torque? that is in us. We are like putzing. Boo -doo -boo 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 -boo. When we could be living with torque, we could be more powerful. We need some fresh oil. We need the anointing power of God energizing our lives. We need the Holy Spirit filling us up a little more. You guys, I actually believe that we're like, we're just putzing around when we could be so filled. And some of you go, well, I don't know if you can be refilled. Yeah, you can. I have proof. Because Stephen was filled and refilled and continually filled. And so was Paul. There's more filling. You know what? It's like this. You need more. You need to keep filling up, continually being filled with the Holy Spirit to give you that power, that fresh oil, that fresh anointing. The Holy Spirit. Ta the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being oil. And you guys, here's how you stay filled. You get in the Word. The Word of God has to go in you and keep you filled up. Meditate on the Word. Let the Word come alive to you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. Jesus is the Word. And if He's one with the Holy Spirit, when you're reading the Word, the Holy Spirit's going in you. They're one. When you pray to God, when you're in the Word and you pray and you listen to worship music and you sit in His presence, you're with the Father, you're delighting in His Son, and the Holy Spirit fills you up. It's your choice. You get to go to the gas tank. You get to go to the oil change as often as you want. You guys go and get filled up with the Holy Spirit and allow his power and his presence to come out of you. In fact, <laughs> I need a little glass of water if I could have one really quick. In fact, here's the verses. I'm going to sing a little song with you guys because you're going to love it. And that's why I need water so my voice sounds really good. So Acts chapter 13. Thanks, I. I'm almost done. Acts chapter 13. Hmm. You're supposed to say amen when I do that. Amen. Oh. amen. Acts chapter 13, verse 52 says, 
And the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. If you're not full of joy, you're not spending enough time with God. It's a you problem. It's not a God problem. Just keeping it real. You got to fill up. You got to go to the gas station a little more often. Get some more maintenance in your life. You got to stay in church. You got to look at your gauges, girls. How do I know that my tank is low on gas? I've got gauges. You know how you know that you're low on the Holy Spirit? You're a little snippy. It's true. Those are your gauges. You know what? You've lost your peace. You feel neck deep in self-pity. You're, you're wanting to go binge on food or Netflix or social media. You want to yell at someone in the car behind you. Those are your gauges. Holy Spirit level low. Fill up. Fill up. Fill up. Be continually filled. Acts Chapter 13, verse 9 says, But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. So if someone can be filled, that means they can be not as full. <laughs> the word filled wouldn't be there. If you're just, everybody was the same. There's like half. This is not filled. It's half. They wouldn't use filled if you can't be filled. There's more. Keep, keep filling up. Acts 4, 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts. 431, and when they had prayed, the place they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word boldly with boldness. Get filled up, girls. Start revving. Revving your engine and get bold and get filled up. And I love this one, Ephesians 518, and do not get drunk on wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can be so full that people wonder if you're drunk. And you go, no, it's not alcohol. It's the Holy Ghost. So full. So full. Let's get full. Let's fill our tank. In fact, I was like, oh, Lord, you want me to do this. Here's my song. You're going to have to sing with me. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning, burning, burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Hallelujah. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning, burning, burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. We're going to skip the Hosanna. We're going to go to the next one. Give me joy in my heart. Keep me burning, burning. Oh, praising, praising, praising. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Hallelujah. Give me joy in my heart. Keep me praising, praising, praising. Keep me praising till the break of day. Pause right there. When Paul and Silas were in prison, they were praising. That's the Holy Spirit in them. I'm not promising you you won't have potholes and dirt roads and bumps and flat tires. You might get that in your journey. Praise him. Keep the joy in my heart. Keep me praising, praising, praising. Okay, there's more. It's so good. Serving. Thank you, the team that served. Give me love in my heart. Keep me serving, serving, serving. Give me love in my heart, I pray. Hallelujah. Give me love in my heart. Keep me serving, serving, serving. Keep me serving till the break of day. Wait a minute. Serving. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the kings. Now that, that is spark plugs right there. <laughs> Whatever these are. Jumper cables. I just jumper cabled you guys. The guy you sing and sing Hosanna. Okay, there's more. It's going to be more fun. This is my favorite. There's three more little courses or whatever they're called. But listen, the word of God is so important. If you're not in the word, you're going to be empty. Get, hide your word in my heart. Keep me learning, learning, learning. Hide your word in my heart, I pray. Give me word in your heart. Keep me learning, learning, learning. Keep me learning till the break of day. Not Hosanna's yet. Okay. <laughs> this is when it gets so fun. Give me gas in my Chevy. Keep my testimony heavy. Give me gas in my Chevy. I pray. Hallelujah. Give me gas in my Chevy. Keep me testimony heavy. Keep it heavy till the break of day. And there's one more for you Ford girls. Give me gas in my Ford. Keep me trucking for the Lord. Give me gas in my Ford. I pray. Give me gas in my Ford. Keep me trucking for the Lord. Keep me trucking till the break of day. Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. 
sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Woo! <laughs> so we're going to go home. It's, it's like two minutes to nine. Here's your two. Keep tuned up. Keep tuned up in your maintenance. Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. Stay tuned up. Stay around godly friends. Stay in church. Stay tuned up. Stay in your life groups. Start a life group. Stay tuned up. Listen to teaching online. Get in the word. Stay tuned up. Are you getting it? Or I'll sing again. You're getting it. Say yes, Lori. <laughs> and then keep filled up. Keep filled up. Anyone that just got born again tonight, it's, it's a beautiful journey. You get in the word. You get in church. You do life with people that aren't perfect. You sit in God's presence. You say, Holy Spirit, fill me up. You say, God, I want to be used of you. You say, Lord, help me to be in the right place at the right time with the right people, getting the right results, living with your purpose. And that's how you start your car every morning. You get out of your garage because there's no more fear. You're okay with the model he made you. Be your model. <laughs> your model. You be you. And go pick up some, someone from the shelter. Go take food somewhere. Get on your mission. Get in your car and be used for his glory. So if you'll pray with me, I'll close up. God, we love you. And I thank you for the message that I feel like you gave me and that everyone so patiently listened to. God, help us to take what we need. Help us to use the jumper cables and just start, start an engine in each of us. Help us to fill up on Holy Spirit power that we would be a witness, God. That's what the Holy Spirit power is for. Lord, I pray that we would be Jesus-loving girls ready to go and, and live this life of purpose with the repair and the maintenance and the construction that you've done in our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, oh, thanks.